desktop as opposed to the usual streaming PC. So uh, hopefully, hopefully we got it done now. If not, we're just gonna kind of roll with it anyway. So. Um, All right. Uh, let's see. So what were we talking about? Um, yeah, oh, it's, look, it's looking good now. Sorry. Go ahead. All right. All right. So just a little bit about the setup. So on prem, uh, just a home lab environment. Like I said, connected to a to an edge router port. I have a route based IPsec VPN going to VMware Cloud on AWS. I also have a route based IPsec VPN going to my AWS VPC. Um, these are so all these VGWs. If we look at our VPN connection here. Do only have a single tunnel? Go away. Uh, you can see we're averaging, getting six, six six networks from there. If we look at our VMC side, sorry, VMware Cloud on AWS side. Route based VPN. Uh, there's not a super easy way to see the routes that we're seeing. This does not. Uh, this doesn't represent correctly. We're on a pre pre NSXT build here. Um, anyway, so we're advertising the same six routes, both into VMC, kind of to the left, and then into AWS on the right, and then through the cross account uh, ENI, we have connectivity from from VMware Cloud on AWS to native AWS. Uh, one of the things we can see is take a look. Oh, let's see if this works here. You can see that our private IP address for a virtual center is uh, 1.196. My my management network when I provisioned it was 1057.00/23. Uh, so what I have is just uh, an Ubuntu VM in native AWS. Take a look here. Same thing. Uh, it has no public IP. Uh, it is in the same availability zone as my SDDC, although you could do that across availability zones, but you would have cross account, or sorry, cross AZ charges that would be associated with that. Uh, let's see here. So you can see our, our private IP, like I said, so we have. Going over our VPN. Also going over VPN, um, we cannot do a, a trace route all the way through due to uh, AWS's infrastructure. So it's tough to believe me on that. I will come up with a better way to show that if we get some additional questions. Uh, anyway, so we have, have our boot VM here. We can get to Virtual Center. So that's great, D. Um, you're showing us that it does work, but what does it take to get that? So if you were on the, the webinar last week, um, minus the, the uh, scheduled downtime that we had, we, I did try to rush through and try to kind of get some of this set up, but ran into some issues. So uh, short, it, it does take a little bit, nothing too, too complicated. So we do have a security group on the AWS side and we have the firewall rules on the VMware Cloud on AWS side. So if we take a look at our security group, Uh, outbound is open. I believe that's the default for the security group. I am also using the default security group, which is probably, if you're a, a big AWS user, probably not what you're doing, but just as an example here for uh, my lab environment. Like I said, I think, I think uh, outbound is, I think this is standard. I don't believe I made any changes to this, but I would have to uh, go through the process again. Our inbound rules. So our inbound rules is take a look and see. Uh, so one of the things we can do, we can actually remove this. Uh, this guy, that was part of our testing from last week. So that was my, just uh, a slash 32 for my my public IP coming from my house. Um, so what do we have here? We have our, this is our, uh, uh, think, 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 sorry. This is our compute network that we have set up. One of the compute networks that we have set up. These are a couple of rules, uh, a couple of on-prem networks that I have. Uh, those are different, 192 and 181. Um, and then this is the entire um, VPC that we have set up. You're probably asking, well, where is our 1057.00/23? So the way that works from a connectivity perspective, You 
can see it's our slash 22 for our VPC. We have three slash 24 for our subnets in each of our availability zones. ABC, uh, all nice and ordered because I'm a little OCD like that. Um, so why, you're like, why, well, where, where's, where's the one? How come it works, right? I already showed that. So if we come over here, if we look at Now we don't want to look at that. If we look at our interfaces, our ENIs, we can see that our tra traffic, so these are, are the ENIs for the ESXOs. We actually reserve these out of your, the customer AWS account. And then we have the, the, the cross ENI or the X ENI, cross account ENI that passes that traffic between the two so we can get to the ESX host. So that's the reason why, why you don't have a 1057 in there. Uh, you just need to allow the traffic outbound, or sorry, inbound from from your either, you could limit it to just the, the subnet or you could widen it out to the entire VPC. Um, one of the things, and I, I kind of struggled with that, I was trying to figure out why things weren't working, but then when I took a step back and realized that uh, the traffic is just the way uh, the way the SDDC, since it resides in the VMware owned and managed account, that's how we're actually facilitating that traffic between the two. So on the AWS side, you just need to allow, like I said, either your subnet that your SDDC is in uh, or the wider VPC that your SDDC is provisioned out of. On the VMC side, we also need to allow the firewall rules through. So. Uh, in NSXT, we do have the same construct between management and compute gateways, so they are broken up between the two. So one, one rule will not encompass, uh, kind of touched on a little bit last week. Um, the services are locked down, so you can't say, hey, I want to open, for example, port 53 DNS to ESX. Not entirely sure why you would, but just as, a, as an example, I think you used the same one last week. Um, they are limited so that you can only say, you know, 902, 903, vMotion, like what we have here to our ESX host. Um, you're not going to be able be able to open those ports to say NSX Manager Virtual Center. Um, so if we look at Virtual Center, what we have set up, uh, this is a predefined, or not a predefined, this is a group that I created. So it just has all the 1918 addresses in it, the 10s, 172s, and 192 dots. Um, so we're allowing ICMP and 443. So if we can through here, edit. Remove ICMP and let's kick this guy off. And we publish it. So, both sides, so the firewall rule, VMware Cloud and AWS, security group and AWS, both of those have to be allowed or configured to allow whatever traffic you're wanting to pass through. Um, to go a little bit further, same type of thing, uh, same type of question, just a little bit different. So, you know, let's say I have a VM in VMC that I want to communicate to uh, EC2 instance. So what I have, I have a couple of segments set up. Uh, I do have a VM that's on, on my shared segment here. Uh, I do not remember what its IP was. So same, same type of rules. We would go to our gateway firewall rule, rules. And so we can see that, so what we have, same type of setup, on-prem to shared, shared to on-prem. So this is what allows connectivity from my lab. Let's see what this guy's IP is here. That's what allows for my lab into VMware Cloud and AWS. Let's go ahead and open up an SSH session of this guy. Okay. And let's go back. So that's just uh, my gateway 
of one of my networks on prem. So, you know, super, super complicated uh, naming scheme for firewall rules on prem to shared, shared to on prem, uh, any, any. So it's just completely open. Uh, and then we have the same type of configuration into AWS. So you'll notice that our, our interface is a little bit different on the applied to section. So these are applied to our, our BTI or our VPN tunnel interface. Uh, that is, of course, where I'm, how I'm getting connectivity into my SDDC from my lab is over the VPN. Uh, and we have the same thing. So shared to AWS, AWS is shared, uh, but these are applied to the, the VPC interface. So this is, if you think about your router having uh, uh, five different connections off of it, one to the internet, one to the uh, cross VPC, one to VPN tunnel. Actually, is it five or is it four? You can see them all here. So it's only, sorry, only four, and then an all up link. So VPN tunnel, VPC, internet interface, and then if you have a direct connect, there's a separate interface for that as well. Uh, lead. So same type of setup. So shared, uh, any, any, so completely open between, between the two. So set these guys up. So AWS is on the left. Steamer Cloud and AWS is on the right. Communication back and forth between the two. Um, so this is a little bit different from the NSX V world. Uh, if you have an SDDC today, there's a pretty good chance that it is likely V based. Um, so some of this connectivity, particularly the connectivity to the management components would, would require an additional VPN and also, uh, so let me think about this. So the management components in order to get to those from EC2 would, re would require a VPN. And then also from the compute gateway for many compute workloads to get to your management workloads would also require a VPN between the MGW and CGW. Um, so maybe a little bit complicated. Maybe it's a little easier because uh, it's kind of what we do all day every day. But uh, you know, it did, like I said, it, it did take a little bit. Just the one caveat that I would call out is uh, if you are looking to set this up, is on your security group it is not either your management cider or any of yours so if we go back to our security group um you'll see that there I, I do have this in here but i can actually remove this Let's see here oh nope sure can't uh, um so i, I hmm I love stumping myself. Live, um, live demo, folks. Live demo. Live, live demo. So <laughs> now, so and, and this is kind of this is some of the stuff that I I, I was kind of struggling not so much struggling with, but uh, it's you know trying to piece all of this connectivity together. Um, is uh, I wouldn't say it's difficult, but it does take a a, a little bit to kind of wrap your head around. Um, Oh, you know what? I don't know why. So, no, actually, I don't. Uh, I'll have to noodle on this. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I don't know if we got any, uh, any any questions, or I guess more appropriately, any viewers. If there's any uh, any questions on kind of what we just went over, anything like that. Well, there's no questions so far. Uh, there are a couple of viewers out there. Uh, so, so one question that kind of came up earlier this week uh, for the last session was, was if there needs to be any routing done between EC2 instances and, and VMware SDECs? Uh, is there any routing? So yeah, yes and no. So what will happen? Uh, that is a good question. Uh, let's see if I need to go back to the see here. Sorry. If we look at our route table, so let's see here. Let's do. Uh, not gonna let me filter it. So, uh, if you look at these, so the all the VGWs, those are the the six routes that are coming from my VPN connection. Actually, you know what I can do? Make this a little easier. A little easier to look at anyway. All right. 
So the only thing that I have into or out of my my AWS VPC is what's coming from VMware Cloud on AWS. Let's do another little demo here while we're talking about this, kind of talking about routing. So uh, I've got a shared segment, we've got a test segment. You can see, hopefully you can see both of these, uh, 10, 255, 100, 172.31.0, full slash 24s, uh, both right here, right? Here you can also see my 1057, what I said was my management side that I supplied when I deployed my SDDC. Let's go through that a segment. Okay, create a new segment. So now this network is available if I wanted to deploy a new VM. We're gonna look at networks. <laughs> Fresh jet. So there's my webinar uh, in BDS. Since we are talking about NSXT, it's not a VSS or a distributed switch, which I think we also touched a little bit on last week. So there it is. Um, so now how would that traffic, <coughs> excuse me, get from the SEDC into EC2 or into AWS. Well, there you go. So what happens when a new segment is created? This is the ENI, or more appropriately, the, the, the cross-account ENI that is uh, where that traffic would come from. So anything that's on this segment uh, is going to be coming from this ENI from the SEDC into EC2 or AWS, um, and then on the other side of that, from anything in AWS would go through this ENI into the SDDC. So that, is there anything that you need to do? Mm, no, as you saw, it's automated. All I did was I created the segment. It uh, created the, the NVDS and Virtual Center. It updated the route table in my AWS account. Um, one of the things that I would say is to kind of pay attention for, and I think we've had a couple of customers that may have done this um, inadvertently so if we go back and we look at our, clicked on the wrong one. If you look at our network interfaces, so you'll see a bunch of these in here. Uh, and when I say a bunch, more appropriately, I mean 17 of them. So when you create an SDDC, part of the account linking process uh, goes through and runs a CloudFormation template that gives the VMware shadow account, if you will, or the account where your SDDC runs, the ability to update, you know, create these ENIs, reserve these IPs, update the route table, and and that's that's why. So that's what allows the, for the cross account uh, connectivity. So so, we'll so, to... so this has been a point of a little bit of a discussion uh, internally lately. So so why six or why seventeen? Why seventeen? And uh, and we did. I think we kind of filled in last week a little bit with uh, some of this because of uh, our our unplanned downtime. Um, so by default, out of the gate, if you were to go through and purchase VMware Cloud and AWS today or tomorrow or any time in the future, the top limit of hosts that you can have in your SDBC is sixteen. Well, that's great, D. But why do you have seventeen ENIs in my account? So we do need the ability to add add a host for maintenance. So if you do have the, the largest soft limit SDDC of 16 hosts, we would still provision a 17th host during maintenance. Uh, so upgrades and anything like that uh, to account for, for failover. So in short, that's why there's 17. Um, one of the things that you'll notice if you need to go above 16 hosts, now you would wanna work with Matt or myself or another one of the customer success architects um, or any of the customer success engineers and, and support to get that, that soft limit increased. So we, what we would do is we would actually go through and provision an another 17. And uh, hopefully that's a little self-explanatory. Why would you provision another 17? So that's just so we don't have to keep going back to the well ultimately. The largest cluster size is 32. Uh, but that would give you 34 hosts. And... You're also going to ask, well, I guess not, a, not so much ask, but maybe a, a point of clarification is the largest size is actually 30 um, in your cluster, and that gives us the ability to provision two additional hosts for maintenance. If your cluster is that large, we may need two hosts. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I just know that comes up sometimes. So It does. It does. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it, it comes up you know, uh, to us. It's something that we uh, eat. Eat, live, and breathe all day, every day. So it's probably uh, just 
secondhand nature to us, but uh, it is a it is a question. Um, so with that said, so if we go in here and we see that we have we have 17 ENIs, only one of them's in use. Uh, so I only have a one node SDDC. See, it's actually the same SDDC from last week. Uh, it expires in 18 days now. Um, so if you go through and you're like, oh well, this isn't the only one in use, you know, why don't I go through and and delete all these? Um, you can. And actually, you know what? Since this is a live demo, and excuse me, my SDDC is going away in 18 days anyway. Nothing stopped me. I don't have any special special permissions. I mean, it is my own AWS account, but it's nothing that stops you from doing it. Um, however, if I do delete this guy, I will lose my SDDC. Will continue to run. There's going to be no no ill effect. The ill effect, though, is that you will no longer have SDDC to AWS connectivity. Um, one thing to note is so not only by deleting your ENIs uh, or really doing anything with them, uh, uh, let's say that there was a change made to the route table. So same same type of setup. So obviously, if we don't know what what interface to route that to, if we change our route table. And since this is in a different account, it's completely freeform. So we can say, hey, I want to say this goes to actually A. Um, oh, we'll detect that. So I'm not going to be able to show this because I deleted all the other ones. Um, but yeah, so one thing to note is so if you come through here and you see, you know, CFB, 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 CFA, and this is the network that for some reason, I'm assuming if you're going to be in here, you're going to be troubleshooting some type of issue. And that's the network that's not working. By all means, you can go through just like what I was going to kind of show, edit that, change it just from CFB to CFA. Um, that could be either, you know, a fat finger. Maybe somebody deleted the B off. Maybe somebody did something. Uh, if if that's what's suspected, you know, probably no further further anything to look at. Uh, if not, if, you know, nobody was in here. If you have any type of logging setup, nobody's in there then uh, I would reach out to the support and we'll take a look and figure out why uh, that particular route did not get updated. Well, that's great. Uh, yeah, thanks, Lisa. So this this plugs a little bit of the gap we had last week. Uh, so if anybody's interested uh, in what we're talking about, there was a webinar last week that's on YouTube now, uh, which you can get uh, via the link uh, at the bottom of the Twitch page here. Uh, we need more subscribers still, even though I think uh, Z's wife has signed up um, to get the custom URL right now. It is something uh, YouTube has turned changed our rules lately, and I think it's 50 subscribers you need now to have a custom URL. So we're we're slowly working our way up there. But uh, if you go there, you can kind of see what, what led up to this. We talked a lot about the foundations of NSXT. Uh, ultimately, I believe that uh, NSXT is going to be our foundation for VMC, but I don't think that's going to happen uh, anytime soon. Um, and I always want to put soon with the, the trademark after it, um, uh, which is kind of a lot of our answers. So, you know, pe people always ask us about roadmap stuff, and, and uh, you know, I got that today, and I'm sure that you get this all the time. Uh, this, is, this is constantly in development, so when features are ready, they go in. If they're not ready, they don't. So... Uh, it's not like we, we wait for a specific cadence or a specific date necessarily. It's just uh, as we develop, we, we roll. So um, NSXT is coming along. Um, like I said, we started off with V, very stable platform, but uh, didn't have a lot of the features since we needed, like the distributed firewall and some of the VPN technologies and uh, some of the other features that are going to be coming soon with, with service insertion and, and other such things. Um, so slowly, I think you'll see us evolve to this being the default uh, SDDC networking topologies. Um, so that, that's kind of why we're, we're putting a lot of emphasis on this, because we really want to uh, get that education out there. Um, because I, I feel like uh, our customer base is, is pretty familiar with NSXV. Uh, that's been out there for, for quite a while, uh, been adopted on premises for by a large amount of companies. Uh, but T is, I don't know if I call it significantly different, but it's different enough that it, it warrants a rethinking in how you do some things. Would that, would that be an accurate statement? Yeah, I think so. 
Um, to be honest, I've I've uh, I've downloaded the bits to deploy T in my lab. I just haven't had time to go through it. Um, you know, I, I've kind of looked looked and poked under the covers of uh, of what the SDDC looks like. Um, it, it's definitely different. I mean, the, the the functionality I would say is the same. I'm sure architecturally and, and how things are do how it's doing things. You know, one of the big differences that that I personally know of is in V, if you're doing stretch layer two, it's the XLAN, but in T, it's Geneve. Um, and hopefully nobody asks exactly what Geneve is because that's about the extent of the knowledge <laughs> I have on it. Um, yeah, so a lot of the functionality is the same. It's the, you know, I don't know, I want to say kind of the latest and greatest, but I, I believe that is the direction that, that we're going, particularly with VMware Cloud and AWS, that, that's definitely the direction that we're going is with, uh, is with T. Um, I'm not sure what the what that looks like internally as far as B or T on prem. I'm sure that the two will coexist for a significant amount of time. Um, yeah, so, so definitely the on prem is kind of a different different conversation. And, and and currently right now, before everybody kind of goes scrambling to install NSXT on prem to work with VMC, uh, it's the same kind of story as with NSXV. It's, you know, if you have T on prem. Uh, it doesn't necessarily integrate with T in the cloud. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't rush. Uh, if it's something you're intending to do anyway, but uh, as part of a roadmap or, or something that, to get ready for VMware Cloud, we have absolutely no requirements for any version of, of NSX uh, on-premises to, to do any of our stuff in our cloud. Yeah, and that's, a, that's also a really good point. So some of the questions that we get is, you know, I, I have T, or sorry, V on-prem. Can I do um, uh, the cross vCenter NSX V implementation? And so even in V, on, so today we, we don't do that. And in T, there is no cross vCenter NSX V. So I'm sure at some point in the future when that when that functionality is, is there with T that we may have some of that where we can share rules uh, uh, rules. Um, I'm just uh, at a loss for words today. Yeah, well, like security groups and but yeah, and, the, yeah. yeah. There you go. The, the the universal security groups, the universal network stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'm sure at some point that would happen. But yeah, like I'm, I'm no, and, and, and I think that that's that's definitely uh, the vision of where we're going, right? Like we we want kind of that ubiquitous network that it's a, it's your network between on-prem to VMC to AWS to to whoever that may be. Uh, but we're not quite there yet, and, and we're working our way towards it. Um, and, and this NSXT in, in VMC is a really good first step. Uh, as we talked about last week, it brings the functionalities of the, the DFW along, um, and it's route-based VPN, it adds. Yeah, and it's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's real big. And, 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 you know, I would say one of the things, uh, if you guys didn't tune in last week or if you haven't tuned in to any of the, the kind of the key stuff that we've done, um, on the route-based VPN, so um, it's, I'm sure it's really, it'll depend on what you're advertising, right? So one of the things that when I set this up um, in my lab was I was advertising, you know, whatever whatever my edge router saw. So I was advertising my, my default route, so 000 slash zero, all my, my internal routes, and uh, and it worked, and it worked fine, but I would notice that any VMs that I had in my SDDC were coming back to my and they were ultimately coming back to my, my house and then going out my, my internet connection from my house. Um, so just one of the things to know is that it, if you do advertise the default route or a default route of 00 slash 0, then all that traffic is going to come back to, to your on-prem, whatever that other endpoint is. Um, may be desirable, but it also may not. So if, if you go through and you set this up, one of the things to know is that, uh, that that's, that's why that's happening. No, that's good. That's, that's good. Really good to, to bring up. And then one of the things that I was uh, so uh, after our session last week, I went through and started trying to get this set up for this week. And what I noticed is, uh, and I'm sure it's different from uh, from router to router, device to device. Like I said, I do have a, a ubiquity edge router four at home, and so I have my you know kind of think to on your left. And, and just quickly, we, we get we get no sponsorships for, for name dropping. <laughs> oh uh, no. Oh, yeah. know, however, you know, if someone's looking to advertise, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly take some drink here. Um, yes, no good good preface. So, uh, but if you think, you know, if you hold out your left arm, so your elbow is kind of my edge router for your hand is my my SDDC, so that's that's my VPN session there. And you hold out your right arm, so right arm elbow again edge router for uh, hand being my VPN session to AWS, what was happening? So I was learning routes. 
I was learning all of my segments um, from here back to on-prem, and I was advertising those back in AWS. So when I looked at my route table, when I had propagation enabled, which is, of course, I mean, this is what I wanted to do. But I didn't want to come in and have to manually uh, either inject or update these. Um, I was getting duplicates. So I would see, so like my, my on-prem, I would have a duplicate of this. I'd have one to the ENI, one to the BGW. Uh, this guy here, one to the ENI, one to the BGW. Um, so it took a little bit of uh, fig wiggling and trying to figure out the configuration. Uh, it's one of the things I did, I was able to get figured out today. Um, so I'm only advertising my local routes. I'm not advertising anything that I'm learning from the SDC uh, into AWS or vice versa, anything I'm learning from uh, AWS back into the SDC. So, you know, I'm not, uh, I, I, know, I know some of the people on, on, on my team think that I'm, I'm quite well at networking. I would definitely not call myself a networking guru by any means. I uh, did take some, some kind of digging to figure out what I, I, I knew it was something I had done. Um, took a little bit to figure out what I had done. Uh, so if you see an oddities, it's, it's, it's likely, it, it could be a limitation in either AWS or, or in VMware Cloud on AWS, um, but really what I would look at. So everything that we learn, uh, we don't ever, you know, we're only advertising what's configured. Um, so if you just have to look and see what, what exactly you're advertising. And uh, if you have multiple VPNs, just making sure you're not duplicating that stuff. And I think he sold, he sold himself very short there. He's a very smart networking guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get told that all the time. So I, I, I really do appreciate it. But uh, yeah, it's, I, I don't know. I know just enough to be dangerous. I, I know just enough to break things. Yeah, no, but I think I think that there is a, you know some merit to that that, that conversation is is that the you know with VMware Cloud and, and AWS and on-prem it, it brings a, uh, a you know. A, a robust skill set required to kind of figure out all those pieces because AWS does networking different than we do, uh, yeah. which is different than you might do it on prem. Um, oh, yeah. and, and kind of that's, I guess, one of the big advantages. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to sell our group as I make no commission, but uh, that's one of the benefits of, of you know, dealing with customer success uh, or uh, a lot of our compatriots can, can help put that all together um, or with your AWS counterparts as well. We work closely with our AWS uh, solution architect team uh, and together we kind of put these things together because it is, it is a lot of, and, and the other problem is, is like we said, not a problem, a feature I suppose, is the speed at which it moves. Um, oh, yeah. there, there's constantly new features that AWS is adding, constantly features we're adding. Uh, so, it, you know, what, once you get it all together and working, um, it you know it, it, it keeps going. Um, but but you, it, it's the cloud world now where it's not like set your network and forget it. It's you, you got to kind of be keeping tabs on what new features and functionalities are coming out. What what new services can I leverage? All those kinds of things. Yeah, 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 it's, and yeah, it's something I don't know. I I feel so I, I I may have been been kind of on an island for a while, but um, you know, before I got into VMware Cloud and AWS, I did a lot of uh, BRA and, and automation and stuff. And really it, a lot of customers would think about, well, you know, they wanted they wanted to design, you know, the perfect, you know, like the Taj Mahal, and they just wanted it, you know, everything to be perfect and pristine and exactly how they wanted it. And we would spend, you know, months on months of trying to figure this out. And we would start implementing it and realize that, oh, actually, you know, I, I want to change this a little bit you know, instead of burgundy I wanted a mop type of a thing uh, and I just try to say is you know we can we can could have accelerated this if we just would have been more flexible so I think it's a, a, a very good point to, to take into account is uh, like you said Matt the, the speed at the, the rate that the stuff changes is uh, very difficult to keep up with so just keep the flexibility in mind and, uh, and there's Tons of stuff yeah. on the internet to, to look up, and uh, and it, it's something that uh, you don't have the time to look up. Or uh... and, and, I, and I think that's a great segue for me to lead into this because because uh, th there's a church in, in Barcelona uh, that has been constantly been you know built and and yeah. rebuilt for for yeah. centuries, right? And it's been something that's been constantly kind of worked on for 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 several hundreds of years, and uh, and this is kind of you know. Via VMC and, and, and AWS and all the cloud and microcosm is, you know, it's it's never quite done. It it'll, it it's always working. It's just constantly evolving to be better. Uh, and the and the reason why it's such a nice segue is is because I want to lead into that that uh, I will be in Barcelona next world week for VMworld Barcelona, 
uh, which which I'm sure will have some uh, announcements around GMC and some of our other products. Uh, Reinvent is coming up the, the, the end of November, uh, which will have some more uh, announcements and such like that. Um, so you know, there's 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 a lot of big news coming and, and a lot of big stuff, but. Yeah, it's it, it's you know like you said, you, you can't you can't build the Todd Hall lock, you know, step back and go, that was awesome, and then never come back to it again. Um, yep. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you could. It'll always be the Taj Mahal, and it'll always work that way. Yep. Uh, but you might limit some of the other stuff you want to do, like if you wanted to put an elevator in as opposed to take the stairs. Yeah. Uh, and and you know, I I uh, my my wife isn't watching, but maybe she can hear me from uh, upstairs. But uh, I was at another uh, conference. In Barcelona a couple of years ago, and that's where I actually proposed to her was on the flight there. So, yep, very oh. no, no, all about that, uh, all about that church. Uh, I was looking forward to going to uh, VMworld this year, but uh, it's not going to make it. I do. I, I wanted to see the. Uh, I'm sure you guys, if anybody's been there, the uh, the building that's been under construction just outside of the convention center. When I was there a couple of years ago, I mean, it was all graffiti up, but it was quite interesting. I enjoy architecture like that, so wanted to see uh its progression not so much yeah. the building progression but uh the artwork that has accrued over the last couple of years well i'll have to try i'll have to try to take some pictures too for you i don't uh, ah, yeah. I, don't, I don't recall that because the last time i was there i, I got distracted because there was a, a police officer that had a a french bulldog as, uh, a, as a as a I can't imagine it was a working dog necessarily i have a french bulldog <laughs> which is why i think it's fantastic because I, I can't imagine them doing anything useful for for security wise, uh, but that's where the They're that's where, look really cute. Yeah, they that's everybody with their cuteness. You know what? And there's actually been studies around um, you know uh, uh, police and, and, and other uh, organizations like that using dogs such as as French bulldogs, other ones that uh, alleviate stress and anxiety and kind of diffuse situations and. Yeah. and and maybe that's what they were testing. I don't know, but that's where most of my photographs got taken and sent to my wife at home was of the the French bulldog, and even had like a little police uh, vest on. Uh, my was... my wife would have been right there with it. She would have been more focused <laughs> on the on the French bully than the building as well. So, uh, so but no. So when you go when uh, when you walk out, it's on the right. If I remember correctly, it's on the right hand side, and you literally can't miss it. It's a it's just a building building exoskeleton with uh, I don't know how the artists got up to some of the top floors, but. Uh, Ah, that's impressive. Being, being artwork all over it. I'll have to check it out. So, so uh, and along those lines, uh, there will be no webinar or, or office hours next week uh, because of, of the Unworld Europe. Uh, a lot of our, our group and time staff is going to be there. So, a lot of our group is going to be there, and the poor guys left behind are going to be swamped with all the work that, that I can't do while I'm there. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, by the way, Z, I have a lot of work to give you. Um, oh no! <laughs> but uh, so, but but there are. Uh, I I uh, really encourage you. There there is a lot of. I think we put the the uh, keynotes up on YouTube relatively quickly afterwards. I know they're live streamed if you have a ticket, but I don't know if they're live streamed outside. Um, but. Pay attention. There's going to be again uh, quite a few announcements. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot around, uh, not just VMware Cloud and AWS, but a lot of our other uh, cloud-based services, uh, which were uh, our group also looks looks after. We look after kind of uh, the yep. breadth of the SaaS offering, uh, which is where we're going to have Paige uh, clap around in a couple of weeks from now. She's going to talk about uh, App Defense Platinum, uh, which is announced at, at VMware US. Um, but there's so there's a lot of a lot of that stuff coming. Really pay attention to that. Uh, if you're going to be at that conference, you know, uh, definitely send me a line. Uh, we can get together and chat about all kinds of things. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be around. I have a whole bunch of customer meetings, but uh, I'll definitely slip some time in there for for anybody that's been a, a viewer of this content and, and one who wants to run along with stuff. And uh, yeah, go ahead, sir. Oh no! I was just gonna. I was gonna do the the uh, the Twitter plug. So if uh, if you're out there, hit hit Matt up, vcloud Matt, or uh, or myself. If you guys have any suggestions for some uh, for some upcoming webinars, VM A to Z. Um, kind of kind of follow that and see uh, any you know, answer any questions. See if you guys want to see any types of setups, anything like that. Would would love to uh, love to do that. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, so like I said, uh, like Z said, we're, we're absolutely very open for some some content. So this uh, this series is actually a response to uh, actually. I think the first one we did before was a response to somebody asking a question around more <laughs> more NSXT content, and then this one became a, a response to uh, we had some portal maintenance and, and some stuff going on during our stream last week, which we wanted to answer the questions that were kind of left open from then. So we we definitely are are responsive and and really want to be as responsive as, as possible to to the audience and, and give you guys all the information that you, you want to consume. Uh, so yes, uh, like she said, tweet him, tweet me. Um, we'll we'll definitely get the docket. Uh, like I said, the schedule is looking like uh, next week is going to be a week off. Uh, the week after, I believe what I'm going to do, and, and this is something I actually feel very horrible about, is is I had to miss the Atlanta View mug today uh, because I had to to cancel that to go to a customer site. Uh, so one of the things I'd like to do is actually deliver the um, V mug presentation. Uh, that I give the VMUGs around the country uh, in the webinar. Uh, for everyone that, you know, because I know VMUGs are very popular, but not everybody can get to them, and they're only in selection. So I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to present that series, and that's going to be, I guess, the 13th? No. I think the 13th. Uh, the week after VMworld, anyway. So that's going to be kind of the next webinar. Uh, then we have paid. Uh, I don't know, 13th, you're right. 13th. Uh, then we're going to have Paige. Uh, so then we're going to have another office hours after that. So then we're going to have Paige. Uh, another member of our team is fantastic. Uh, she's going to talk about AppDefense Platinum, that is kind of uh, the free-ish version of AppDefense that, that comes with certain versions of our, our licensing. Um, she's already done some AppDefense presentations, which I, th I think everybody should go back and kind of watch. They're uh, uh, very well done. Uh, but we're going to talk about some of the differences and what you get kind of with that licensing. Uh, then we're going to have Aiden signed up to to do some uh, talks around some of our SDDC configurations and nice. and, and linkings between that kind of stuff. Uh, that was actually supposed to be on the 13th, but he had another come in, so we push it back. And I'm really actually, what I'm pushing for going into December uh, is to get some of our partners uh, come online. So uh, I've reached out to a few uh, that we've worked with that have extensive offerings, and I'd like them to kind of come up to show that, show that it's not... It's not just VMware that's that's selling this VMC on, on AWS type uh, thing. That, that we have a, a large ecosystem, a large amount of uh, ISVs and CISOs and, and yeah. uh, integrator partners that uh, have built really cool service offerings on top of what we've done. Uh, so I'd really like to kind of highlight that and make sure that off to people to see that you know there's more options out there if you have a particular need that we're not necessarily answering ourselves, there could be a partner that is, is leveraging what we've given as a base to build upon to answer those uh, you know, use cases. Uh, so and that's going to kind of take us to the end of the year. But like I said, the, the webinars, or so the office hours in between those webinars are always kind of like this, a little bit free-flowing. Uh, you know, ask questions, give us topics, or we'll just have to ramble, uh, which... which I, I can do quite well. I always bring my dancing shoes to, uh, is what I always say when I go on site. Um, we, we were joking about that a little bit, uh, uh, you know, earlier in the stream, a little bit before we started about, you know, the, the soon trademark about uh, uh, timelines that, that everybody always tries to, to hammer us on and uh, always requires a little bit of dancing. And it's not because we don't want to tell people something. We just don't want to overpromise. Uh, you know, we deliver features ever, when they're ready. Never good and, to overpromise, not to deliver. Yeah, yeah. and... And, and what's funny to me is is how far expectations have come in the IT industry. I mean, you know, take us back five years and everybody thought we were the greatest thing ever, releasing a major version every couple of years. Um, and, and now it's like, you know, what, what do you mean you haven't updated this in two months? Um, you know, and, and that's the world we live in. And, and VMware has definitely learned that. And, and that's what we're doing with, with VMware Cloud is, is and all of our SaaS offerings is taking a lot of that onus off of you as on-prem having to update all of these to get all the latest features. We we take that burden on, uh, which to me as a customer, I would I would be all over as opposed to, I would say you you know, as opposed to having to bring VRA from, from version, you know, 6 to, to 7.5. Uh, you know, that's that, that can be, in some certain sense, uh, an undertaking, but if you use the SaaS offering, that's our problem. Definitely. Uh, there was uh, one of my customers tweeted they were uh, they deployed their SDDC and 
I don't remember the exact wordage, but it's like, you know, I spent five minutes deploying my SDC, and I came back two hours later, and I was running uh, ESX and Virtual Center 6.8. Didn't have to lift a finger, really. So, uh, it's good, pr very good point on, uh, on, on what... Yeah, well, and, and going along with, you know, our, our, our uh, code stream and, and uh, other offerings of, of VRA in the cloud, and I'm, I'm struggling for the names exactly now, uh, it, you understand how how much work went behind how do I size my VRA instance? Oh man, yeah. I right? Do I, do I go distributed or do I go single install or now you just pay us a monthly fee and we figure that out for you? Yeah. Uh, which to me I think is, is super valuable. Lets people to actually you know deliver business value as opposed to continually updating bits. Actually, that brings up a good point. My uh, my good buddy Cody, uh, TMM for for VRA. Maybe we can get him on one of those one of these sessions uh, early next year. Yeah, absolutely. So so yeah. the uh, the SaaS offerings of uh, uh, what we used to call Tango uh, has definitely been on the list. So uh, absolutely, let us know if that's something the uh, keen uh, people want to see. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people we can bring into those conversations. Actually, that might be that might actually be. You know what? Let's do that one as a um, let's slip that into November as a office hours because uh, I don't know if you know uh, Mandy and, and Kim on the customer success team are also big into VRA. Uh, hey, anyway, we can, I'll, I'll, I'll hit up uh, I'll hit up Cody. I'm sure. Yeah, can. we can bring Cody in and we can all have a little fireside chat. Uh, maybe I can oh, even yeah. get a you know a little fire in the background for uh, you know, a conversation around uh, the functions that we the features that we brought in with the SaaS offering where it differs from on-prem and, and where that's all going so you know what let's let's try let's aim to get that I guess would be the uh, the 20th uh, let's try to pencil that one in um, and, and like I said if anybody has any other uh, ideas besides uh, you know Lizzie and I come up with crazy stuff uh, you know late Eastern time here uh, where I am uh, definitely reach out to us. Uh, As you guys can see, we have no problem talking. Uh, so if you would like to kind no, of guide, I, guide I, what we talk about, this is this is your chance to not hear us ramble back and forth. And, and absolutely. So and, and the other thing that, that I'm going to be looking into uh, to adding to this too is is kind of a, I guess the kind of the, the call in show uh, uh, type of thing. So we do have the Twitch chat, uh, which. Which up to now, I think people have been a little bit shy to ask questions. Uh, I don't know why. I think I think we're relatively friendly. So you can be a little bit scary if you meet him in real life, but uh, 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 virtually, <laughs> virtually he's really nice. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and Michael just makes horrible dad jokes, which uh, you know, is, is, is his shtick. But uh, we love him for it. Uh, and, and, and yeah, it's good thing he didn't join this week because I actually don't have the you know good old uh, queued up on on my laptop. Um, <laughs> But definitely, we, we as you can tell, uh, you know, our team is definitely passionate about this product, passionate about our customers, and, and passionate about you know people succeeding. And we're you know we can we can talk about this stuff for for days uh, if you let us. Um, and, and we'd like to have uh, you know you as the audience as part of that conversation. So uh, perhaps we'll add like a, a, a Zoom chat or, or something along with this that I can. I can put in, in, in the link uh, or on the, the, the Twitch page for people to kind of, you know, join in and, and just even if they want to just become part of the conversation and uh, uh, we'll have to moderate that a little bit somehow, which will be potentially the challenge. But uh, uh, last week was great. What do we have? Yeah, we must have had like 15, 15 I, I, questions. Yeah, last, last week we had a very interactive uh uh, audience and and, and, I, and I feel a lot of that's because of the the twit the, the zoom format people feel a little bit more comfortable I guess um, so uh, we're, yeah. we're, we're trying to we're trying to break those barriers down of you know you can ask the same questions in, in the twitch chat um, or, or via Twitter to us and we, we can answer them but uh, we're, we're continuing to kind of evolve how we're offering this because again uh, like I said that we're only interested in, in getting this information out there to make you guys successful on this because if you're not, it, it becomes our, our job to make you successful on this. So uh, the easier yep. we can get you in and, and informed, uh, the, the easier my my day is, uh, which I guess is kind of selfish and self-serving, but I, I do it in a very 
well-meaning manner of, of uh, actually preferring to. I, I actually, you know what? I, I would rather have a harder job and see all of our customers succeed than, than have an easy job and have my customers suffer. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why I know I'm in a perfect group. And I know that's why Z's here. And I know that's why uh, you know, Michael and Dustin and Prasanna and, and Amy and all the, the people on our team and Paige are, are you know, very well committed to that. And even the, the, the greater customer success organization, uh, which which is a fantastic thing that VMware has done. So, uh, but I think I, I successfully rambled for, for 20 minutes to fill up the hour. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, and hopefully there's some value in there. But like I said, uh, you know, if you're watching this on, on YouTube afterwards, you can also leave comments on, on YouTube. Uh, but I, I think the easiest way to, to reach both, well, to reach me and, and then potentially, I don't know how, how frequently he's on Twitter, but uh, that's probably I've the best. I've trying to be more, more and more. I, it, it took me, I don't know, however long, many, many years. But uh, I've been Well, I, 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 got told, uh, I got told the other day that, that Facebook is the old person's thing. Uh, yeah. Just the other day, the so I, I think Twitter is evolving into the slightly older person business thing. With so we may need an Instagram presence. I don't know. No, no. Uh, I you know uh, I think I think we can maybe let Paige handle our Instagram presence because uh, <laughs> she's way more in tune with that stuff. That or or I'll have to contract out my my thirteen year old daughter to to handle our our social media. Uh, yeah. presence uh, although I, I honestly admit, admit I, I do chuckle whenever somebody gives me their email address and it's like a Yahoo or a Hotmail I was like come on man um, you know get get with out of 2003 um, but <laughs> you know everybody always uh, my, my I won't give out my, my whole personal email but it's uh it's super easy it's a gmail account and I've had it for I think like 17 years so yeah it, it, Leave it to the imagination. Everybody's like, "Oh, that's really easy." Like, yep. No. Yeah. No, I, and I signed up for for Gmail. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, kind of side conversation. But uh, there are many methods to to get a hold of us. Uh, uh, Twitter probably being the most uh, quickly uh, quick and responsive because we leave YouTube comments uh, uh, or comments in the videos. Uh, we will get them, but the, we won't be able to respond quite as easily directly to you uh, as if it was on on Twitter. Or you can look us up on LinkedIn. Uh, our names yep. are, are out there. Um, so, you know, again, multiple ways to reach out to us. Please do. We will answer any and all questions in a very honest manner. Like I said, we have, we make no commission off of selling this. Uh, and we're only interested in people being successful. So we will give you the real answer. Um, and, and that's just the way our group operates. And then we've been successful at it. And then we will continue to be successful at it. And, continue to have successful customers. So I think with that, we'll, we'll close out. Uh, Z, you got any closing remarks? No. Thank, uh, thank you guys for listening. Hopefully uh, hopefully that answered the question. I'm not sure if uh, I, I can't see the, the Twitch attendee list, uh, but hopefully that answered the question that we had from last week. Uh, or if you watch, go back and watch it later on. Because if not, uh, would love yeah, to. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll redirect him. I'd love to make sure that, 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 we got, uh, that we got your question answered if there's anything else. So. Yeah, That's it. absolutely, and I really appreciate you, you Z, coming up again uh, and, and presenting all this stuff and giving us some really good uh, information out here for people to consume again. And so, like I said before, uh, next week there will be no stream, and we'll be back the uh, 13th with uh, presenting on VMC use cases, architectures, and you know, kind of what we've learned from the field uh, type content. I look forward to seeing everybody there and appreciate everybody for watching uh, tonight. Thank you very much.